Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So get something to drink, sit down, because I have a feeling this video is going to be a little long, a little chatty, but it's been a while since I've sat down and chatted with you. I am gonna have some questions you all gave me um, and answers as well in this video and tell you where I'm at and kind of what's going on in our life right now. I'm actually in Florida right now. The girls and I just flew in and Corey will probably be coming down at some point um, whenever he ties up some stuff uh, with work. We're gonna be here for a couple of weeks and I have a really big fun project that is going to be posted on my home channel and working with my mom on some stuff so definitely stay tuned for that. The weather is absolutely gorgeous here in southern Florida and our flight was so easy. We live in central Pennsylvania in case you're new around here and it was a two and a half hour flight. It was the first time that the girls had flown and they just absolutely loved it. My parents recently moved down here to Florida and they actually work at a place called Gator Boys Camp and it's a school and a wilderness camp for boys that they live there year round and so my parents are a huge part of that some of you maybe have visited the camp if you've ever been in the Sarasota slash Arcadia area and my parents have really been adjusting well and have been enjoying their work that they are doing with the camp as far as how our lives have been going they've been going so well um, just normal family life. We do homeschool in case you didn't know we have three girls They are six seven and eight and we homeschool and so we do a lot of activities with our homeschool group And we're in the midst of the school year right now So there's just a lot of schoolwork going on on a daily basis. My husband has a contracting slash fencing business so that's been keeping him busy and we've just been doing really well. I did ask you all for questions across Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. If you guys don't follow me on Facebook, you may wanna go ahead and do that. So I'm going to be looking at my iPad down here and gathering these questions just at random and answering them as I go. A lot of you, for some reason, don't know that I actually have a second channel. So this is my main channel. I do mostly meal preps and things like that on. And then I also have a second channel. It's called Adeline's Home. It will be linked below and I do a lot of home organization um, DIY home decor and those sorts of things so some of these questions are gonna be related to personal family life they're gonna be related to cooking and they may be related to home making <laughs> a repeat question that I've been getting a lot across the platforms is are you going to go back to doing some day in the life content? So if you all don't know, if you've been new here, I used to do lots and lots of vlogging and very much day in the life type content, drifted more into more informational content like how to meal prep, how to do DIY projects and things like that over the last couple of years. And it's just been a really good rhythm for our family to do it that way. Um, however, I am thinking that I'm going to start doing more vlogging content and things like that. I have some changes coming to my channels in the next few months that's going to help free up more time for me to do that. We've just been really busy and just had things going on in life where it was hard for me to mentally be filming a lot through our day and just more trying to make focused times during my week that I film but some of that's gonna be changing and so yes the answer is yes I don't know if I will consider calling them day in the life videos but I think inserting more of that type of content will be coming another interesting question I got that took me off guard a little bit because I have never gotten this question in a Q&A um, is have you ever experienced racism with a biracial family? So we are a biracial family and as far as the area that we live in um, It's not very common that racism is experienced however when you start putting your life on the internet <laughs> and you start getting a audience that is from all over the place, you tend to expose yourself to criticism in all shapes and forms. And so that is one thing that I have experienced through my platforms here on YouTube. Um, I don't know if Instagram I ever have, but particularly here on YouTube, um, there's been comments that I've had to filter out, just negativity towards our children, which is 
really sad and you just know that that person obviously you know is hurting and they're allowing hate to come into their life and it's not because of what we're doing it's because of something that is in their life and so god has just given me grace for those types of people both me and my husband we feel that way and it makes me really sad you know i believe that we are made in the image of god and all of us human beings are made in the image of god no matter what we look like so it's sad whenever that type of hate comes out of someone all right so we've been living in the house that we've been living in for a year now which is really crazy to think that that much time has passed and i've been getting questions about are we thinking about making it permanent and that sort of thing so one of the drawbacks to the house that we are currently living in we are renting it is it is sitting on two acres um it looks like a lot more because because we are surrounded by farms we're really way out in the country which we love but if we ever wanted to do our own animals um, the girls really would love to have horses at some point and things like that it's not very feasible on that piece of property so I'm not gonna give a direct yes or no but that is the biggest drawback um, to that property and we'll just see where life takes us over the next little while. I've actually gotten comments, and this was a question that was given me, but I've also gotten random comments about this, and I think it's so funny how people get a particular idea whenever you start changing some of the way that you are dressing and looking. So over the summer, I had worn a lot of dresses and some skirts and stuff just because it was summertime, and I personally love being really girly. And things like that and for some reason people just assumed that I stopped wearing pants I think or something I'm not exactly sure and so um, I got a lot of comments about that and a question of why I did that and the simple answer is I like being feminine and it was summertime and now that it's been wintertime in, in PA um, I've been wearing jeans and stuff again and personally my husband actually really likes me in more of like the jeans and t-shirt kind of look and not that I have to dress that way in particular but it's just something he prefers so I kind of do a mixture of both the girly side of me and the jeans and t-shirt kind of look so I've had questions about our garden and this is something I was waiting for like a chatty video like this to talk about and I get lots of questions whenever people see our cellar and wanting to know if we grew all the food that I preserve and things like that so um, we are very blessed to live in an area that there are so so many farmers around us it's very 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 easy to access food in bulk produce in bulk things like that so in a sense it is almost easier to purchase from the farmers around us and it also helps them however we did do a garden last year and made a massive mistake massive mistake and I am um, was really put out about it after a few months and I just had to decide you know it, it was a learning experience and we're gonna move on so we planted our entire garden and it was a it was a good I would say like medium-sized garden underneath of the shadow and underneath the the cast of a walnut tree and what happens is walnut trees are very acidic and after years the what comes off the walnut tree actually soaks into the ground and it makes the ground very acidic and it makes it very very difficult to grow any type of produce on that so for example i had pepper plants that grew one teeny tiny pepper and did not grow any bigger than after i had gotten them at the greenhouse um i had a lot of green beans green beans are super easy to grow in our area in fact my neighbor had a massive overabundance of green beans like five gallon buckets lots of five gallon buckets of green beans and her garden is really not that far away from where ours is it's on the same kind of hill area and my green beans, I got maybe like two meals worth of green beans and most of them didn't even germinate and sprout. So it just was a complete 
failure of a garden which was really disappointing um, because we did hustle to try to get it in after we moved in and things like that so to do a garden where we live we would have to relocate the entire garden um, we actually did allow it to grass over um, in the fall and I don't know entirely what we're gonna do this coming spring so you'll have to stay tuned for that but that's what happened to my garden and it was just really disappointing and we just gotta live and learn and move on all right so I got asked to share a few marriage tips um, we have been married 10 years this past year and this coming year we'll be married 11 and if you don't know our story I'm not gonna get into that today I do have some videos in the past explaining it other than um we have a huge redemption story my husband has walked through a lot and god has been so gracious to us and we have been so renewed and redeemed as a family and i just feel so grateful for that um but when it comes to just practical marriage tips or anything like that the things that come to my mind is first of all marriage is the most selfless act that you can walk out if you are selfish in a marriage it is not going to work um it's going to really burn to the ground <laughs> you have to be very selfless and that is i think why god created it is to teach us what it means to lay ourselves down for someone else so that being said i know that for our marriage and the place it is now because it has grown so much and i can honestly say i'm married to my best friend and he tells me that all the time as well and i think that whenever we both are constantly laying ourselves down for the other person it just makes this beautiful thing so unselfishness also just being friends choosing to let things go you know like when you have a really good friend in your life there were often times the reason that you're very good friends with that person is because you choose to let their downfalls go um and obviously there are times to address things there's are times to um like have deep conversations and things like that but i think for the most part if you can start accepting that person for their little funny quirks i heard something not that long ago where somebody said i, I don't know if i'm getting the percentage exactly right but it was like somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of the things that annoy you about your spouse and we're not talking about detrimental things we're talking about little things like whether or not they put their laundry in the hamper whether they take out the trash you know like those sorts of things, most of those things are not going to change. And vice versa, you know, I know there's probably things in my life that um, irritates my husband <laughs> at times, and they're just funny little quirks of things that about me and about my personality that probably aren't going to change because they're just the way that person is. And I think if you can start looking beyond those little things and you can gr come to grips with the fact that a lot of those little things aren't going to change and you just need to accept them and love them i think that that makes a huge impact on your relationship and on your friendship because we do that with our friends you know our best friends they probably have things that are really annoying about them and are really maybe clashing with you but we often look beyond those and we still love that person anyway we actually defend our best friends right we we pick them over other people we even if they mess up we're always like oh but don't don't worry that's just the way she is you know like we often cover them with a multitude of love and i think if we start putting our spouse in that position as well and we just link arms with them and we're their ride or die you know we're the that person that would stick up for them no matter what i think that makes a big difference in our thought process towards our spouse so corey and i often find a lot of things to laugh about laughter is a huge part of our relationship and just being silly and especially if something comes up where you've got tension going on and whatever you know there's if you bring laughter into it you really can't stay mad forever right <laughs> So I think that that's another part is being lighthearted and finding ways to talk about things at good times and just treating them like you treat your best friend. That's the best thing I can come back to is treating them as though they are someone that's very important in your life and that you would put beyond everybody else. Uh, another question related to my husband is has Corey ever 
considered working full-time for your channel and doing YouTube. So my husband is a hands-on guy, <laughs> big time. He loves building things. He loves constructing things. That was one of his first jobs was building um, small sheds and barns. And now of course he does like kitchen and bathroom remodels and builds uh, residential fencing and things like that. And so for him, sitting down at a computer is not his thing at all. He's not somebody that would work in an office or anything like that. And so we have discussed the idea of like what we what would happen if we would flip homes because that's something that he could walk in his gifts and obviously I could do the filming and the designing and things like that. So that is something that we have tossed around. It's not completely out of the picture, but as far as him editing for me or filming for me or getting in on the techie side of YouTube and behind the scenes, um, I definitely don't see that happening. It's just not his thing and I don't really want him to be shoved in a box and not not be able to walk out what he's good at and his own gifting and so um we could potentially collab in those things but i don't see him ever fully working for what i do so another question i got is how do you balance life with homeschooling so if you don't know i am the oldest of four children i have three younger brothers and my mom actually homeschooled all of us um the entire way through school i remember at one point maybe in like fifth grade or something, going to school with one of my friends, experiencing a normal everyday school day at school, and I absolutely disliked it. I don't wanna say hated it, but I really did not like it at all. I came home and thanked my mom for homeschooling us. We just loved it. We were very, very active homeschoolers in the state of Pennsylvania. You can actually be involved in choir, in school sports, in band all of those things with your local school district. And so we took advantage of that. My brothers played football for the local high school and things like that. We were involved in a homeschool group that did a lot of classes and things together. And then we also were involved with a, our church and youth group as we got into high school. I had so many friends. Um, I was a very social person and my brothers were as well. So all of that brought into it. Um, how I do my homeschooling now is greatly affected by how my mom did that and so we like to get our kids involved in a lot of things so how do I balance it all I am a very unscheduled person <laughs> I do try to get some routines down, but our routines change a lot, and I've learned to be graceful and flexible with that. Um, we have days where school goes with us, like for example, being here in Florida, we brought school with us and we're able to just do our school work, the actual books and things like that. Um, here, this year, I'm using the good and the beautiful as far as curriculum, I've gotten that question a lot, what curriculum I'm using, and we really, really love it. But with the good and the beautiful, another aspect is, is that they don't have massive, massive lessons, which I really appreciate because I'm able to kind of integrate what else I want to put into it. We can do extra reading. We can go on field trips, which that is something that my parents did a lot. We did a lot of traveling. We would go to historic sites. We would go to museums and other things like that. And that was a huge part of our curriculum. And that's what I'm doing as well. And it really made um, history and science and those sorts of things very real to me through school because we got to go see the aquarium. We weren't just learning about it in a lesson. You know, we got to go to Gettysburg and we got to see the sites of historic events and it all just made it really real. So that's really the view I have on homeschooling is being very flexible, very fluid, um, able to kind of weave in the book work with real life experiences as well. And when it comes to work and homeschooling and family life, um, God and family life is first. And with Corey and I establishing our home once again after 
going through a lot of the things that we went through in the last couple of years that's been very very important to him is that I have my focus on our family on homeschooling the girls and then my work kind of comes after that and so that's why sometimes I have gaps in uploading and things like that is because those things come first but I think you have to navigate that um, with your spouse because there were many years where I was walking through being a single mom and you know filming and things like that and also getting the girls into kindergarten at that point so all of those things I think have to adjust as you have different circumstances in life all right so somebody asked why they aren't seeing my videos anymore and some of it could be because sometimes YouTube goes through and cleans people out of your subscriptions I'm not sure why and that could be why so if you're randomly seeing this video and you were subscribed to me at one point, you might want to double check if you are. So that was just a random question I got. Another question I got is if my kids would ever go to public school. And I'll say it this way. The area we live in, there are not very many good schools. Um, we live in a pretty small town kind of area. So as long as we are still living where we live, no, they would not. Um, but if we were to move somewhere else and you know that sort of thing who knows what could happen in that situation um, another question I got is do we go to church so yes we've been going to a church for the last couple of months that we've been really enjoying and yeah I guess that answers that question um, so I also got a fun question and that is what is a meal that reminds me of my childhood and my mom is a really good cook um, that's actually what she does she, she's a, involved with the kitchen here at the camp at gator camp and so there's lots and lots of meals that really remind me of my childhood i can think of two off the top of my head first one i thought of was chicken eddie that was one of my favorite meals growing up it's basically like you make it with spaghetti you put in put chicken in it and it has sort of a cream sauce and we always put peas in it and that was one of my favorites so if you have a favorite meal from your childhood, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear it. And then the other one was broccoli cheddar soup. My mom made that a lot and me and my brothers to this day still really love that. Okay, so kind of shifting gears from talking about cooking a little bit. Somebody was asking how to figure out what containers you need when you're organizing. So on my home channel, I do a lot of organizing and I do a lot of closet organizes. Those are kind of my favorites is things that you organize inside of something like your cabinets and stuff like that. So I do get out my tape measure and I measure shelves a lot of times when I get into an organizing project. And from there, I can kind of go to the store. Sometimes I take a little tape measure to the store with me and I'm able to measure bins and kind of figure out what would fit on that shelf. The question was, how do you figure out what bins and things like that you need organization tools so that's one thing that I do I do put some thought and effort into it I'm not one to generally pick up something at the store without a purpose um, as much as I love shopping and enjoy that especially now I've been changing my thinking a little bit on things and stuff and leaning more into some minimalism but whenever I'm going shopping for decor or for organizing tools i generally have a purpose in mind and i like to get bins and things that fit into that specific area so that would be my biggest tip is measure and then go shopping um, even if you're shopping online you can always find the dimensions for something on amazon or any other site online all right a quick little foodie question how to preserve sweet onion and green onion and my personal favorite way to do it is to dice the onion and put it into a bag in the freezer you can pop out what you need you can throw it in a pan and raw you're going to dice it raw put it in the bag put it in the freezer you can put it in a pan with some oil fry them up i mean they are a great way um it's a great way to quickly do that you can also freeze dry it but I know that most people don't have a freeze dryer so I'm just giving a more practical way to do that and you can also freeze cut up green onion as well so someone asked about tips with minimizing your wardrobe which that is a video coming very soon so just stay tuned for that um, I have been working on that myself and I have something coming up that I'll share more on that 
I feel like I'm just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through questions. You all gave me so many this time around. So I'm just really trying to like pick ones here and there and I don't wanna make this video three hours long. But one question I got was about a dish drying mat. And this was something that for several years I have like gotten dif dish racks. I hate them sitting on my counter. Um, and I've gotten drying mats because they can, you know, eventually smell bad and things like that. So my solution that we've just boiled down to and my husband likes this as well because a lot of people don't know this but he's in the kitchen a lot too he cooks a lot he helps clean the kitchen he is very very hands-on when it comes to homemaking and helping me and so the best thing that we've come down to is just simply using either a tea towel or if it's a big pile of dishes sometimes we pull out a bath towel stick it on the counter obviously clean and we put all the dishes on there we dry them and put them away um so our main routine with doing dishes if they're not going in the dishwasher is to wash them dry them put them away um i don't let things sit on the counter to drip dry so there was a multiple questions about either a cookbook or a website um and that sort of thing like kind of consolidating a lot of the things i talk about on my channel that is something that I would love to see within the next couple of years. Um, like I said, there's some behind the scenes changes coming for me in the next few months um, with some help doing some background stuff on YouTube and that's gonna free me up to be able to focus on some of these other things like that, like getting a website eventually and things like that. So I think that will be in the future. I would love to see that happen and hopefully sooner than later. Someone asked if I would ever consider writing a book on family or simply showing our family more on vlogging. And I did touch on that earlier that I'm going to insert more of that content, maybe come back to Instagram a little bit, um, putting up things like that. And would I ever consider writing a book? Yeah, I actually would. Um, I am a writer at heart. I love to write and I don't get a lot of time to do that. I don't have a ton of hobbies outside of what I do for my family. Um, I do actually love planners, which I mentioned that before I got another question on that as well so I love all things paper I'm a big reader I just recently got myself a Kindle um, and I love it highly recommend if you're a reader and they're very inexpensive on Amazon um, but reading journaling writing planners papers stickers all of those things i love i had a smaller cricket joy for a number of years and then just here in january my husband actually bought me um the cricket explorer i think it's the big one where you can cut leather and things like that so i've been playing around with making my own sticker sheets for my planner and stuff like that um that's been really really fun so would i consider writing a book yes Yes, I would at some point. And do I um, wanna share more planner content was the other question. All right, my camera battery died, so I had to replace it. But I might consider doing a planner tour or something like that, but it is my own hobby outside of YouTube. And it's just something I enjoy doing off camera. All right, so somebody asked a question that I do get off at random, and I think people get confused just if you're not familiar with the background of it. So somebody asked, um, when we left the Amish, <laughs> which anybody that knows me personally that's watching this is going to die laughing because I'm not from the Amish. <laughs> um, the only connection with Amish Mennonite's a different thing and I'll get to that in a second, but the only connection with Amish is that my husband's dad was Amish when he was a boy. Um, but we do have Mennonite background. My parents um, both are from the Mennonites and Corey's parents actually still attend a Mennonite church. And um, we, my parents would have went to a kind of branch off the Mennonite. There's so many different kinds of Mennonites. And I think like if you're not familiar with the world of the Mennonites, um, then you don't really understand that, but there are. And Amish are different than Mennonite. Um, they're just two different types of churches and things like that. Some of them can resemble each other with like different types of head coverings and things like that. But um, my parents went to a church that was a branch off the Mennonites until I was 11. Um, and like my mom would have worn a head covering um, during that time and that sort of things. And then they, they left that church and ever since then we have not been involved with a Mennonite church or even anything close to that. So, um, 
that is our kind of long story short as far as my husband like i said his parents still attend a mennonite church and i have loads of family members and friends that attend mennonite churches um in fact while i am here i am visiting with lynette yoder and love her friendship that we have and so there's yeah there's lots of connections to it and a lot of my canning and food preservation comes from all of that from my grandmothers and mom and my mother-in-law and all of those people that I glean have learned how to cook and preserve food from so there's a lot of that background but I personally have no Amish background um and so there's just a little clarification on that. Someone asked, how long in real time does it take to do a weekly meal prep? So this completely depends on what I'm making. Um, I mean, there are some recipes that take three times the amount of time it takes to do another recipe to make something. So I think that that is something that you can customize as you're planning out your meal prep. If you just wanna do marinades, like throwing marinades and chicken in bags for the week and ready to go, like that that's so simple compared to making a whole um, casserole and your, you know, boiling noodles and things like that. So I think it just depends on what you're making. But in general, for myself, I would say that it can range anywhere from like four to six hours um, in a chunk of time to to prep and that sort of thing. For me, I'm filming it, so it also takes extra time to film it. It would go a whole lot faster if I wasn't filming it. Um, so there's all those components too. Someone asked what type of canner I use the most, water bath or pressure? And to be honest, I would say 50-50 um, because once you get into the world of canning, home canning, you will kind of understand there's certain things you like to pressure can, there's certain things you like to water bath can, and yes, um, coming from a Mennonite background, we do water bath things that are not like recommended to be. Um, and I've had a video out about that before, just like kind of the traditional way of canning. And there's also a lot of countries around the world that still do mostly water bath canning and don't even do pressure canning. Um, there are some things that we like the taste of it better. Um, if it's water bath versus pressure canned. A good example of that would be corn. I do um, creamed sweet corn and we have tried both ways. We've tried pressure canning it and water bathing it and whenever you pressure can it for some reason the starches in the corn get caramelized and they do not taste very good. Um, it just like it cooks it way too hard. So I water bath that for three hours I think something like that and I do it outside I have a big water bather um, that I can do it outside so we can do a lot at once and that's a very Amish Mennonite way of doing corn um, and so yeah it just depends I'd say 50 50 kind of you have to decide what you're gonna be canning and it might help you decide whether if you're trying to decide if you want to buy one or the other somebody asked how do I keep a good attitude with my family um, because it seems like I often have a good attitude with my family so um, this is not always the case. You know, I have bad days too. I have days where I'm extra frustrated or just maybe I'm tired or, you know, your hormones are crazy that day, whatever. Um, I don't always have a good attitude with my family. I have bad days too. But I think one thing that comes into play is my relationship with God and just leaning on that and not relying on myself and not relying on, um, what's going on around me all the time. I think that whenever you are talking to God and you have a relationship with him and you've accepted him into your life and asked forgiveness, um, you know, I think that all of those components coming into it really takes your eyes off of what's going on around you and it puts it um, in a different place, a different perspective. And so I feel like that keeps my heart in check a lot that I have this feeling where I am the one to make the decision whether or not I'm going to focus on the current moment or if I'm gonna be able to see the big picture. I got multiple questions about how I kept our girls busy when they were younger, particularly, and I was filming and things like that. So. I have had this question before. I know I've answered this question in the past and I hate the answer because it may not help you out very well, but our girls are each a year apart. The first two are 12 months apart and the second two are 14 months apart. And to be honest, because they've always been so close in age, they play together. That's what they're doing right now. They're playing outside. They play together all the 
time. Like they are very good at finding their own things to play and I have very rarely had to be the entertainer <laughs> in their life. So I would just give them things to play with and they often played together. We have not tried our best to not overdo screen time. Um, we do a lot of older movies. We're not very big into a lot of the newer shows and movies that are out there. So even when they are watching movies, I feel like a lot of times it's positive things and good things. It's not that we never have screen time. We have rainy days and days where it's just easier for them to be watching something and possibly learning something new. So that's good. But um, my answer is kind of a cop out and that is that they've had siblings close in age and that's how me and my brothers are each every other year. And so we played together a lot too and you can find, they can find all kinds of games out of all kinds of things. And so that's my answer is they were just good with playing with each other and that kept them very busy. I had a couple people actually ask the question of if I can share the names of the cookbooks that I shared in a video, oh my goodness, last year. Um, so I will leave those. I'm not, I don't even have them with me. Obviously I'm here in Florida, but I will go back and get the links for those cookbooks and leave them below because some of them are like some Mennonite type cookbooks and have um, canning recipes and things like that in them. There is a lot of very personal questions on these lists of questions um, and some of them I'm just simply not going to answer because they're just our family's business. Um, but I did actually get another question on how do you and your family, what practices do you have to keep God and Christ the center of your life? And the thing that's popping into my mind right now, and it might be kind of not the conventional answer, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and give it. We are very open as a family um, in discussing our emotions, discussing um things with our children, especially with my husband's journey and the things that he's come out of, you know, we've had to talk about why that happened, you know, especially with our oldest. She's very aware of what has happened in our family and the younger two are in a very big sense as well. And so being very open, not shoving things under the rug, um, talking about emotions, talking about um, situations, not ignoring things. I think that that is something that can be so so harmful is when things are ignored or just shoved under the rug and not discussed and talked about and so I think whenever you lay that foundation in your home and you know that your children know they can come to you and talk to you about anything and you talk through things instead of letting your own emotions get in the way um, and just allowing that space to be able to discuss things, I think that really makes it easier to teach your children and to keep God in the center of it. Because if we're always pretending that everything's okay and pretending that um, we don't have any problems, it's really hard for the need for God to be there. And so I think just addressing things, even things like bad attitudes or like when it comes to parenting your children, you know, if you bring in how God can help solve the issues going on, even at a really young age, like you would be so surprised at how much a small child can really have faith and grasp that idea. Um, it just makes for so much more peace in your home and a lot less frustration if you're able to talk about things. All right, I'm gonna wrap these questions up with a couple fun ones, just kind of um, going at them quickly. So what is my favorite drink right now? Um, I would say I've just honestly been making some decaf iced coffees and I found a creamer, it's called Super Creamer and it's really good together. So I've been doing that. And also what is my least favorite chore in the house? Like what do I dislike doing? So right now the girls are at the ages and stages where they have learned how to do certain things like load the dishwasher, switch the washer and dryer, those sorts of things. And so I've been very blessed to have them on that and whatnot. But I would say my least favorite chore, and if Corey was sitting here, he would be like, mm-hmm, because sometimes he ends up doing it and that is cleaning the bathrooms. I just like it's the last thing on my mind generally is to make sure that i'm cleaning the bathrooms on a regular basis i'm just being honest here and so then he's like 
toting all of the cleaning products to the bathroom and he just washes it all down and whatever. So I'm very blessed that he is willing to do that, like I mentioned earlier, but that would be my least favorite. I'm gonna tell you all about our trip here and what you'll be seeing in the content in the next little while. But one other question I got was, what is your favorite thing to preserve? And I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite thing to preserve. I really do enjoy the process of a lot of it, but probably off the top of my head, and the funny thing is it's also probably my least favorite in the same token, and that is doing corn. Um, I enjoy it. It brings back a lot of memories of my childhood of doing corn, and also it's so fun because generally the week we do corn, um, this past year we did over 600 ear of corn, but generally that week we eat so much corn on the cob because we have these huge bags of corn, and there are nights that that's all we eat. We just cook up a ton of it with butter and salt and we just eat corn on the cob and that's the only thing I make for supper we just eat a bunch of it and that's so fun and they're such core memories from my childhood and then my children are making them now but that's also one of my least favorite things because it is a huge mess if you were here this past summer you know that we actually set up a tent like canopy outside and did it all outside because once it dries on things it's so sticky and it's like just miserable to clean up. So it's my favorite and least favorite all at the same time. All right, so I'm just gonna chat a little bit of our, about our trip here. So I'm doing a fun project in my mom's house and actually we're making plans to do some other things here, some fun projects here at their house in Florida. They have the sweetest house. I just love it so much. It's just perfectly set up for them and then to have some extra bedrooms for us to come and visit and it's an easy flight to get here like I mentioned earlier. And so over the next um, little while, I don't exactly know, they do come home for the summer, um, a few months out of the summer, um, and so that may take a break, but I'm going to be making some trips down here to work on some projects and film them here in my parents' home, and of course, Corey and the girls will be along and doing fun family things so I may be including some of that type of content either in videos or on Instagram as well. So you're gonna see some content come out from obviously my house but then you also will be seeing some stuff from my mom's house here as well. It's just nice to get away from the cold of Pennsylvania this time of year and come to South Florida and it's just like you walk into summer. It's amazing. You know, the girls while we've been here have been getting their little tans on, getting darker. My husband is um, part African American and so their skin tones just, oh, they get so sun kissed while they're here and it's so fun for them to be able to come and swim and go to the beach. We were to the beach already and it's just a great time away without having to pay to stay at a resort or something like that. We can just simply enjoy the area here in my parents' area. Obviously getting to spend time with my parents as well while we're here has been really fun too. Um, they both do work over at the camp and there is opportunity for the girls and I to go over there and to work with them and volunteer and things like that. So that part is exciting. And like I talked about a lot in this video, we do homeschool School, my husband's self-employed so it makes it so flexible for us to be able to jump on a plane and come down here for a few weeks whenever we want to and just kind of bring our lives with us in amongst the questions I got for this video I got a lot of comments on just people that have appreciated our story that really enjoy the type of content I put out and I am so grateful for all of you especially those of you that have been around for years and years and you've walked with me through a lot of difficult years, um, painful stuff, and seeing the victory on the other side that God has had waiting for us for a long time. And so I am just so thankful that you have been here and I'm excited for this next season of life. I've got a lot of new stuff coming up just with traveling back and forth to from Florida and um, just some other things that we have coming down the way that I'll be filming and sharing with you all. If you stuck through this whole video, I'm so glad that you did. And if you are completely new here, I'd love it if you subscribed and stuck around. I just live a very normal life and enjoy sharing it with you all and inspiring you and encouraging you. And I hope that's what my content 
always does for you. I am so excited to chat with you all in the comments, so do leave me a comment below. I love reading through as many of them as I can, and I will see you all in my next video. 